Alrighty, hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Serving Nerve, where we talk about whatever we want, and today we are going on to tier two of the carnivore iceberg, the carnivore cringe iceberg, and as we go lower and lower, deeper into these treacherous waters, the cringe only will increase in density, so I'm absolutely excited. Tier two is raw meat, the consumption of raw meat amongst people who believe that for some reason, being on a carnivore diet is where it's at. Even though a lot of these people still do things like use spices and coffee, which are both plant-based materials, I must full-heartedly admit. So, I'm not sure how carnivores some of these people really are, but, you know, today we're going through the raw meat phase, and it's only gonna get worse. Trust me, oh my goodness, this doesn't even really, like, get as bad as the next things we'll be talking about. Um, but, you know what? This is just tier two, so let's just take a little dip. We're basically, you know, dipping our toe in the water tonight, so uh, let's just get into it. We've got this lovely lady over here. Let's see what she has to say. They want you to believe that raw meat is dangerous and filled with parasites, tapeworms, salmonella, and food poisoning. Yet at the same time, they encourage you to keep consuming their highly addictive, ultra-processed, seed oil slathered fake foods. All right, my people, so let's just, instead of, like, listening to random people online, just go online ourselves and find a little information to give us a bit of perspective. It's obviously not 100% accurate, it's just a general series of estimates and also percentages, but it'll give us a little perspective for what we're going to be getting into. So, from the Center for Disease Control, they have the estimates for foodborne illness in the United States. And they estimate that roughly one in six Americans or 48 million people get sick, 128,000 people are hospitalized, and 3,000 people die of foodborne illnesses. All of this information is literally on the CDC website. Just look up foodborne illnesses and you'll find the info. So it just gives you information on how many people actually get sick in the United States from food. Now, this does not include exclusively raw meats or meat cross-contamination. It includes also plant life, fruits, vegetables, etc., and also foods that we can't really calculate for as easily, like fast food and stuff like that. It's very difficult to actually gauge where the food poisoning comes from at times. Uh, you can also go onto recall websites and find, like, you know, if you look at recalls, you can see what actually has potential cross-contamination with salmonella and stuff like that. And it is also a lot of fruits and vegetables. But one interesting thing is going through the attribution of foodborne illness findings, you'll find that actually going down here to this little sector, out of the 17 food category, blah blah blah, is produce is actually a massive contributor. Produce, a combination of six plant food categories, fruits, nuts, fungi, vegetables, leafy greens, root vegetables, sprout vegetables, vine stalk vegetables, accounted for nearly half of the illnesses, 46%. That's a lot. You could assume that some of this is going to be exposure to like, you know, fecal bacteria, animal products, all kinds of stuff, like, you know, bacteria that comes from other things, say an animal like is to hypothetically like die near like a stalk or something, that can spread disease. Animals can also produce waste and that waste will act as runoff, so it does affect the food and vegetable department. And that doesn't even account for like human error and things that humans do to screw up our food and vegetable, like produce and stuff like that. 46% of the illnesses, it's really bad. Um, but then among the individual food categories, leafy vegetables accounted for the most illnesses, so Again, good to note, many of those illnesses were caused by norovirus. And if you go and look at what norovirus is, um, it's like one of the number one things in the United States involved with foodborne illness. It's like massive. Then if you go to meat and poultry, a combination of four animal food categories, beef, game, pork, and poultry, accounted for fewer of the illnesses. It accounted for fewer of the illnesses, but for 29% of deaths. So again, there is a concern here. Poultry accounted for the most deaths, 19%. Many of those were caused by listeria and salmonella infections. This rate is partly due to three large listeria outbreaks linked to sliced, processed, deli, turkey meat. The last such large outbreak occurred in 2002. So, you know, it's not to like just say, oh, it's all animal products that cause these things. It's just to give you perspective that there is a health risk with there being potential foodborne illness when it comes to raw and or cooked animal products. Animal products in general, depending on how they're processed, 
can be risky when you consume them. And if you choose to undercook your chicken or not cook your animal products or poorly handle your food and cross-contaminate everything, you're gonna have a potential concern on your hands. And again, this is not to denounce everything that the people say in the videos, it's just to make a little perspective. I'm just pointing it out, my people. There is some concern with foodborne illness when it comes to animal products. You know what? That's hilarious. It's like saying, like, they want you to believe that this bad thing is bad, but they want you to believe this other bad thing is actually good. And I get the idea here, because, you know, it's the idea of, like, government recommendations for things being suboptimal, industry funding, things like that, kind of getting in the way of actual health. But the risk of parasitic infection and the risk of, you know, getting sick from eating raw meat is actually a thing. The cases of parasites and, you know, food poisoning in the United States alone is enough to make it clear that the food that we are consuming typically when it's undercooked raw with potential cross-contamination as well, you know, it's making it pretty clear that people, one, don't know how to handle, you know, things like raw chicken, things like raw beef, things like raw pork, and they do have, at the very least, potential exposure and potential risk of parasitic infection and foodborne illness. But I do have to also agree with this individual that, you know, eating hyper-processed foods, excessive amounts of heat-treated seed oils, which do contain potentially trans fatty acids and oxidized oils, because of their shelf life not being particularly stable and them not being well, you know, well taken care of in terms of like how they're supposed to be stored. And then on top of that, them being heat treated. And also some processes for certain oils can make them go trans fatty in part. So I do have to agree. There are certain things when it comes to hyper processed food and oils that can be particularly unhealthy for individuals. But it's not to also make a foolish note to say that, well, if the government says this is bad, that means it's actually good. Raw meat is not good for you. We have very seldom sums of raw meat that can actually be consumed, and it has to be quality controlled. We have to be getting grade A sushi fish if we're going to be having sushi. We have to go through X, Y, and Z means of getting, you know, beef to be safe, you know? That's why they recommend if you're going to do a steak, obviously you want to do it at least rare, you know? And also, you don't want to be eating, like, ground beef or ground pork or pork or chicken particularly, undercooked, because it can potentially carry things that you can't put inside your body. I don't know why I'm explaining this. It's like talking to a fifth grader or something. Even a fifth grader would know this. Like, I believe that we can have, you know, industry funding and stuff like that get in the way of what we actually see as a healthy food scene. But that doesn't mean that eating raw meat because the government says it's bad is healthy. Like, like this is, it's just cringe. It's logical cringe. It's just blatant distrust in government that perpetuates you to think that bad things are good and good things are bad. Like what next? Asbestos? Cigarettes? Like what's what's the line we're going to draw here, my people? Like they're all bad. Are we supposed to operate as if it's good because the government also says and tells us and informs us that it's potentially risky? Like, yeah, it's just so annoying. It's like dealing with children, but even children are smarter than this. Order a steak at a steakhouse raw. No. Dude, no, you have to. no. The 22 ounce bone in natural cut ribeye, please. Okay, how'd you like that cooked? Oh, I don't. You don't want it cooked? No. You want I'm gonna it raw? have it raw. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, God, I feel so bad for this server. I hope they tip her well, because honestly, this would be so stressful. You you know what? She's probably gonna go back there and inform the kitchen. Like, cause usually when you have a weird request, you're informing the kitchen as well. Like you're saying like, listen, I know this is weird, but the guest wants it this way. They want it like this. And then they have to like check, check how you're bringing it in, double check all this other shit for it and be like, are you sure this is what the guest asked for? And you're like, yes. And it's weird. So it's oh, it's just so stressful. And then you know, you know that a solid 90% of the time, probably not in this circumstance, but 90% of the time, the guest orders something weird and asks for a weird request and they don't like it and they send it back. And then the restaurant owners, the manager, the, the, the chefs, they all get mad at you. It's so annoying. I'm sorry I'm ranting. I've just, uh, restaurant industry, man. Drives you batty. Dead serious. Like not on a grill at all? No, just raw. Are you being serious? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and two sides for you? Thank you so much. You're welcome. Dude, I love how they still got the sides, like the cooked sides. That's freaking hilarious. 
Oh, oh I, I'm so sorry, dude. Yeah, no, I don't think I'd be able to cope with that. I didn't even know they'd legally be able to serve it like that. I guess they'd have to give a warning, like eating raw or undercooked meat or seafood can cause X, Y, and Z, increased risk of foodborne illness or whatever. But, you know, I, I didn't even think they would, like, find that on a management basis they could do that. That's impressive. I'm actually impressed. I'm actually impressed that these gentlemen managed to get this steak raw. All right, all right. We got some kidney. We got some pancreas. I'm not good at this stuff. Like, I, I'm gonna need to plug my nose. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> you are <laughs> Give me a nut. <laughs> 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 I ate mine and the what one you no, no. You're the first guy I've ever heard brag about eating a <laughs> <laughs> So, I have to point this out. Like, this is like the liver king. Also, he's got a bunch of controversy on him right now online and whatever crap. It doesn't matter. Point I'm trying to make is he's very iconic for being like all for like eating raw meat and stuff like that. Eating liver, eating all kinds of stuff. I have to point this out. The visceral reactions that very normal people have towards eating raw organ meats, metallic, fucking quick to oxidize organ meats, and like, you know, having them be raw, like, the reactions in themselves do indicate, I don't think we're meant to be eating them. You know, humans have a pretty well-designed system where if it smells bad, it looks bad, and it doesn't taste good, you probably don't want it inside of your body. And you know what? You can say I'm appealing to the senses or whatever, and that it's like conditioning and stuff like that, and that we're just conditioned in this society to think that it's bad and perceive that it's bad, but the reactions of people who are even willing to try this stuff are kind of telling in my opinion, but I could be wrong. So this is actually very interesting. Like, what is your opinion of tartare and, you know, raw things like that? Because if it is food safe, then it's up to the individual if they want to eat that kind of thing. Like, if it's food safe enough, like you're eating raw meat, like raw beef tartare, you're eating, you know, sushi grade fish. At the end of the day, it's your choice as an individual, but I'd say it's quite an acquired taste. Like even eating raw eggs, it's an acquired taste. Like you break into that world bit by bit. And the other thing is the quality of these things is so beyond the scope of what I've seen a lot of people ingesting on a raw meat scale. When it comes to carnivore and also this like whole raw meat trend. It is interesting though, it's very interesting. There are certain forms of cuisine like ceviche where you like cook shrimp in acid instead of actually like cooking it, cooking it. You know, you expose your palate to different things, different methods of cooking and preparation. That's when it kind of goes to being like a cuisine, which I have a respect for, but also a slight disgust for. When it comes to this, I don't think I'd be able to cope. We do enjoy some noms every now and then, I won't lie. We got liver with breakfast, lunch, and dinner because liver is king. Look at this incredible femur. We're gonna take all that pure marrow right out of it. Who needs vegetables when you can eat testicles? Eat your testicles, folks. Primals. And then we got a pound of some fresh ground ribeye. We got the real salad right here. These are pork rinds. How does he- This is Dr. Yoon on TikTok. Pardon if I'm butchering his name and he's reacting to the liver king. And listen, I'm not here to be like a stand for medical professionals and whatnot, but on this platform, he's a pretty neutral source in some capacities from what I've perceived. I haven't seen a lot of his content, but when it comes to like eating raw meat, you know, the risk of again, infection, sickness, uh, you know, parasitic infection, uh, it's there. You can say, oh, it's not that high. It's not that big of a deal, whatever, but it's there, my people. And then on top of that, yeah, he's asking, how does he poop? He poop. There's seriously like no fiber in any of this food. I have friends of mine who eat like no vegetables and I swear they sit on the can for an hour. There is actually like an argument to be made here where if you actually are eating such a high fat diet, you're gonna be like shitting a lot. Like logically speaking, it doesn't make sense. No fiber, right? Well, fiber does a couple of things. Like from what I've seen, like, and this is actually an important question. Some people on the carnivore diet get really constipated and then others say they can't even trust a fart because they're worried about shitting themselves. So it's really interesting watching the amount of fiber intake, like be zero and the bowel variability go beyond the scope of logic. I think it's fat intake oriented when it comes to that or something like that. It's, it's very interesting. You know, I've never found bowel movements that interesting in my life, but for some reason on the carnivore diet, 
it just goes to fucking shit, quite literally. Okay, so I recently saw this guy and his whole thing was eating raw chicken every day until he got a tummy ache. And I think the entire point of his videos was to one, like get views, but also disprove the idea of getting sick when eating raw chicken. Don't do this at home. Raw chicken does actually have one of the highest risks for foodborne illness. And like, I don't think I need to tell you that. I think, you know, we all kind of know it, but point being made, this is his day 70 of eating raw chicken. He has a glass of eggs uh, as well. And also he has a small egg on top of a jar, which when I look at reminds me for some reason, please God forgive me for saying this. It reminds me of one man, one jar. And also forgive me for I have sinned in regards to such a statement. But then also he's got some sauces here or something like that, so. I don't know, but let's just kind of like listen to what he's got to say. Day 70, eating raw chicken every day till I get a tummy ache. We're gonna try a couple new sauces in this one. First one will be plain ranch. It's a bit windy. Plain ranch, honestly. I don't really think it's good. Buffalo Ranch. The other thing I have to point out about this guy is I'm pretty sure he like just does it, but he doesn't like really sugarcoat it. He just does it and he's like, it, it is what it is. Like it's not like, I don't even know what he's trying to prove, but I don't know if he's really part of the carnivore diet or anything like that. I think he's just like, he's just a guy. A Florida man named John is eating raw chicken until he gets a tummy ache or ends up in the hospital. Of course, he's a Florida man. He says he's currently on his 26th consecutive day of eating only raw chicken and raw eggs. Experts say that chicken should be cooked to an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit because it could have several different types of bacteria, including salmonella. Eating it raw can cause diarrhea and vomiting, but so far, John seems to be doing all right and hasn't claimed to have gotten sick at all yet. John says that raw poultry tastes like scallops or shrimp, sort of like sashimi, which is a Japanese delicacy. He doesn't think it's the raw chicken itself that will get you, but it's more what they're doing to the animals in the factory farms. John says he's getting the chickens he's eating from a small farm half an hour away where they don't use antibiotics, chlorine, or injections. Now, the interesting thing is when you use antibiotics, you actually do expose the livestock that you are growing to antibiotic resistant bacteria. Like they can develop that in their bodies. They build up resistances to antibiotics, which is also why when it comes to taking antibiotics, you're kind of careful about like your gut microbiome and stuff like that at times, depends on the antibiotic. But antibiotics are actually really interesting because they can kill off your gut bacteria. You have things like rifaximine, which they've used for curing SIBO or helping alleviate the symptoms of SIBO, because what it will do is if you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO, uh, which is, you know, a little bit of a, a blanket term, there are, there are certain kinds of bacteria. Some are like methane producing and some are, uh, I don't remember what the other production is, uh, whatever. Anyways, point being made, you can use rifaximine when it's uh, medically prescribed to wipe out your gut microbiome, basically get rid of the bad bacteria, but it also gets rid of your good bacteria. But if you were to consistently do that, keep using antibiotics, you can also build up gut resistant bacteria though and things like that. So you wanna be careful about that kind of shit and uh, you know, talk to a medical professional, of course, because I'm definitely not one, and obviously I'm just saying blanket term shit. But I'm just pointing out my people, um, yeah, I can actually agree uh, that when you expose animals to like antibiotics and injections and stuff, you do change, not just them, not just their body weight, their physiology in regards to like how much meat or fat they have or whatever. Uh, you also do change the acts of the bacteria inside of them. But saying that, Flesh is flesh, and flesh can grow bacteria and expose you to foodborne illness, no matter the antibiotics and stuff like that. Like, you do have the risk of actually still getting salmonella from chicken that you get from a better farm than the chicken that you've gotten at the store. Like, it's still a thing. It's an avian. It's a bird. It can carry things that, you know, you don't want inside of you. That's why you cook it. Now, you know what? It's impressive to see this guy if he's telling the truth and he's not actually getting sick on camera or off camera or anything like that. It's impressive to be like, you know, an anecdote or a case study. Um, but I am curious what else he does. Because if we look at everything he does, then we can actually like study all the variables and see like, where he's really at 
and like what this could involve, like everything it could involve, which is something I actually really like to look at. Like in spite of my biases, uh, I really am inclined to learn about these kinds of things and then see the weird one-offs because we do have cultures in the world where they do eat raw meat. How do they do it? We also have people with like very specific gut microbiomes that just demolish all kinds of bacteria and also like have insanely like, you know, well-designed gut bacteria themselves. Like it's just so interesting. So I'm sorry that I'm being so vague and subjective, but it's an interesting situation. And if the individual is telling the truth the whole way through, hey man, more power to him. But I think it's absolutely disgusting and bypassing the disgusting factor, I wouldn't say it's safe. And this is part of the problem. Now we have somebody eating a Walmart chicken breast or like just a random chicken breast. Trust me, that ain't no special chicken breast. In fact, it looks like it was reduced down in price. Why are you eating raw chicken breast? I agree, my good sir. Why? 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 Like, why? You know what beats me? The only sane individual I've seen on these TikToks so far. Like, Jesus Christ, she's just eating it. She's just eating the chicken breast. She's just eating it. And I don't know where people's heads are at when they're doing this kind of thing, but they can't be particularly not unhinged. Like, this takes some level of being, like, a little bit wacky jacky in the brain zone, if you get what I'm saying. Like, I'm not gonna lie, my people. I've eaten a lot of weird stuff. But nothing that's gonna try and give me foodborne illness and to think it's good. Like, it is just wild, dude. And then you've got this gentleman. You know what, my good sir, I have to say? Great minds think alike, and I have to appreciate you because nobody else seems to, honestly, whoever this man is. Give this man a top hat because he truly deserves it. Like, geez Louise, honestly. I'm sorry I'm cringing so hard, but it's like, yo, bro, we're eating raw chicken now. Like, what are we doing? And the only sane individual throughout all of these videos that I've seen is this guy. This guy just saying like, why? Why are we doing this? Raw chicken in Japan. I went with my friend to this new place in Tokyo that has a bunch of cool food stands. But this one with the giant tuna stood out to me. But when I looked a little closer at the menu, they had raw chicken dishes and this raw chicken and raw egg bowl. So I ordered it and decided to try it out. All they give you is soy sauce and a little bit of wasabi and I'm cool with eating raw egg. But the soy sauce flavor is not enough to get rid of the raw chicken taste. It's really raw. The texture of raw chicken instinctively just didn't feel right. I don't know if I'll try this again, but would you try this out? I wonder what their quality and product sourcing is. Japan's like on a whole new level for these kinds of things, but I still wouldn't trust this kind of thing. I don't know, man. You know what? I'm not trying to be crazy. I don't think it's safe. I really don't think it's safe, even if they have restaurants that do it in Japan. But saying that, like, Japan is like high tier for their egg quality and a lot of their like, you know, their livestock quality, so I don't know, man. Um, I'd still say it's not safe. And also, this guy wasn't even into it, and he was actually, like, quirked into, like, going to a restaurant and stuff and trying it out, and then he was quirked right out of it upon experiencing the texture and flavor of raw chicken. So, I don't know, man. So that was tier two of, like, the carnivore diet slash carnivore eater slash TikToker kind of, you know, cringe iceberg. Just tier two. We're gonna be going back in time next episode, I think, because... Oh, the third one is an experience. The third one is a very special experience and I'm gonna leave it as a surprise for you for when you see this video. It's not just raw meat. Oh no, oh no, 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 don't worry. You know, it's, it's not gonna be even close to even eating just raw meat. You know, the idea of having like high quality, freshly sourced raw meat, don't worry. We're not even gonna go there. We're going on to tier three next. So tell me what you think in the comments below my people. If it were safe, 100% safe and certified, would you eat raw chicken? That's an important question I have because personally, I don't think I would. I don't eat chicken anyways, but if I did, I don't think I'd be able to cope with eating it raw even if it were food safe. But tell me what you think in the comments below my people. Would you do it? Anyways, that was the video. So tell me what you think and uh, yeah, it's been lovely my people. Slater.